<coughs> Welcome back to my garage. Uh, in this episode we will uh, talk about uh, the dyno that I built and the software I'm using. And uh, I will be welding uh, one of the brackets for the fairing on the bike. Because uh, I saw that it had um, uh, one of the welds had... Uh, uh, was broken from uh, caused by vibration, uh, caused by the wrong balance factor. So, um, so I'll show you that. And um, yep. So uh, let's get to it. I'll bring you over. So here's an overview of the dyno. Uh, we can start with uh, the roller here. Uh, the roller or the whole roller assembly is uh, is an uh, uh, electric motor, an ABB electric motor. And uh, what I've done is uh, I've removed everything uh, from the inside, so there's just the the empty shell uh, and the rotor. And the rotor is the uh, roller. Um, so it's a great, uh, or it's it's a simple uh, way of doing it because you get the bearing assembly and the axle and the roller and everything uh, all ready. All you have to do is, uh, or it's already all it's there. It's ready to just uh, mount a sensor, which I've done here, and you see that uh, you see the bolt there. That's what this whole pickup is triggering from. There I managed to lose the sprocket from my bike into the engine so I'll have to fish out that later. Uh, it's um, it's a uh, Honeywell GT100 whole sensor pickup uh, uh, often used uh, as uh, cam sensors uh, in various cars so uh, it's triggering that bolt there and um, uh, one other thing about uh, using uh, a electric motor like this is that uh, I contacted the company ABB and asked if they had any information about the inertia of the rotor and they did so uh, uh, there was no measuring or estimates or calculations involved I just got the inertia of the roller from them and uh, plugged it into my uh, program uh, so what I've done here is uh, I've welded uh, kind of a spine so you can see uh, the steel bar across here and there's one big one all the way to the front and it's supported down here and then there's the front wheel mount which is a slightly bigger piece of tubing uh, that can slide to um, to adjust so it uh, can uh, to adjust for different wheel bases and uh, it's all when you find the right position you just just clamp it down with these bolts under here so it's a simple system and works great of course you can make uh, maybe some uh, screw so you can uh, so you can uh, use a handle and fine adjust but it's fairly easy to just uh, use your hands and and push it into position um, I made a uh, kind of a subframe around it and mounted these floorboards so uh, you have something to put your feet on while up there uh, and that's about it. Um, the software, uh, I will put the link in the description. It's uh, called Simple Dino. Uh, it's free and uh, it works uh, okay. It's not very sophisticated or uh, it's kind of limited in some ways, but uh, it works okay. And uh, so that's what you're seeing here on the screen. And um, the hardware I've, uh, I'm using for uh, for picking up, or I'm picking up the roller RPM by the whole sensor, and I've made this 
small capacitive clamp that I put around the plug lid to pick up the engine RPM. And uh, here is the Arduino shield that I've made uh, to take those two signals and send it into the computer. So I also made uh, six uh, or five, or it's actually six, but one of them is on the board there. So that's uh, ambient temperature, and then there's five other uh, inputs for EGT or or other temperatures or various things you I might need in the future. So that's my own design. That PCB is uh, made uh, made it by uh, with Fritzing and uh, also produced at their uh, production facilities. It's uh, fairly expensive, but for uh, just one single board it was uh, uh, okay and much faster than getting it done in China. So uh, that's the dyno. Um, you will be seeing more uh, of that in the future when I get the bike running and, uh, and I will and We'll start the testing of it up on there, and then I'll show you uh, show you how uh, or show show the program when the dyno is running or the software, and uh, what kind of uh, graphs it or how the <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like the readings and uh, uh, yeah so um, that's it. Um, I'll bring you over to my bike and show you what has happened and uh, then I'll try sh to shoot some of the welding with my crappy flux core welder because I'm out of gas and uh, the flux core is also m uh, full of moisture so it's not a great experience to weld with but uh, I'll try and I plan now I've, I've been thinking about making uh, a new frame fabricating a new frame for the bike and I think maybe, because I'm quite pleased with uh, everything from um, or the rear end of it. So from the pulley and back, that's working okay. Uh, need to brace up the swing arm because it's a little bit flexy. But uh, but what I don't like about the frame is the tank uh, that it's a combined frame and tank, and and it's. Uh, one thing is that it's hard to uh, or scary to work on it because you don't know when it will catch on fire. The other thing is that uh, it seems to be of kind of a weak construction and also the geometry with, with the lower tube going like this and then straight up to the uh, to the headset and there's no bracing so there's no triangulation here there's just one tube and it's square tubing and then the tank tube well, so it doesn't look too, um, doesn't look very uh, sturdy, and it's kind of flexy too. So, <coughs> well, uh, yeah. So, what I was thinking was that I w I would keep the the. Wait, I'll bring you over. What I was thinking was that I will keep this part of the frame. So from here and up here and then I'll uh, take a big piece of tubing maybe three inch or or maybe in four I think three will be enough and I'll uh, I'll weld it in here and then bring it straight up here to the head uh, head tube and then I'll make another one or a brace going from here a standard uh, brace and back to uh, the seat and I think that will um, make it a lot sturdier and less flexible and also uh, and I'll use uh, some aluminium tank or fiberglass tank or something and then I won't have to worry about everything I every time I want, need to modify something on the frame maybe weld on a bracket or or yeah, stuff like that I won't have to worry about uh, it blowing up on me so that is probably the plan in the future but as of now I will keep it as it is as it is to uh, so that I can fo uh, can focus on the engine, and you can see here that uh, the vibration has uh, broken one of my welds, probably a bad weld 
or it looks like I've penetrated into this tubing but not into the frame so my fault really but I'll have to fix it just tack it up here so it, so it will hold until I fabricate the new frame so I'll uh, bring the welder over and some light and I'll try to film it while I'm welding will be quite the experience for you So that's it, nice weld, <laughs> nope. but uh, it's staying on there. I use these uh, old t-shirts just to protect everything around, so from splatter, like the ignition, and uh, yeah, not exactly fireproof, but but I've also got uh, half a bottle of uh, coolant here, which I can quench it in if it uh, catches on fire. So, HMS. Oh, HMS. That's probably Norwegian. For, uh, for uh, I don't, I don't know what you call it. <coughs> yep. So that's um, that was uh, this episode. Um, Please subscribe and click the like button, leave a comment, tell me what you like, what you don't like. Um, the next episode uh, will, if we're lucky and the tungsten slugs uh, uh, arrives, it will be about uh, drilling the crank and uh, gluing in the tungsten slugs. If not, I may make a small tutorial about uh, making cylinder spacers, just how what tools do you need and uh, or or what kind of tools do you absolutely need and what tools are just uh, convenient to have um, stuff like that maybe even an episode about um, about uh, what you need to know to start hacking different cylinders on uh, your moped or cylinders from uh, other brands that doesn't really fit onto your moped that may might be interesting for some people at least the beginners uh, in the moped stuff. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. So long.